How we doing folks? This is the Tech Gooch with another video, well I guess more tutorial than a review this time, but it is a review too. I'm going to just show you, last video I did, I did, uh, I showed you how to do, put a uh, Snow Leopard, a Mac OS X Snow Leopard on a Dell Mini 10V netbook. Seemed like a lot of people like that, and uh, this time, when you do that, when you do the netbook, you have to have a, a Mac or, or something that runs Mac software in order to get it prepped. So uh, this time I'm going to show you how I did it and how I basically what I did it from was a Hackintosh that I have. I have a, uh, a homemade rig with a, a gigabyte motherboard. It's a Core i7 machine basically so it's uh, it runs off similar the, to the iMacs and stuff like that but it's a, it's a full on desktop. Excuse me. I stuffed up those. Uh, but <clears throat> so basically that's what I'm going to be installing on my PC. I'm going to go through everything uh, basically from the start and uh, even show you how to basically you have to have a preboot CD and show you where you get that at and uh, uh, all you got to do is Google iBoot one word and it should be the top of the list. But um, basically from there we uh, will install it and then uh, I'll show you how even to get it so it does, you don't have to have the preboot CD you can actually boot right off the hard drive so uh, there we go and uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so here we have the computer. I have the my burned copy of the iBoot in the CD drive, and I'm going to turn the computer off. Put on. <sighs> Obviously, I have a lot of hard drives. <laughs> so what's going to happen is the uh, bootloader is going to automatically load from the CD drive because I I have uh, the CD to boot before the hard drives. So. Make sure your computer is set up properly before you do this. And uh, you can see a lot of different guides and stuff online. There we go, bootloader's loaded. Now what you come over to do is you gotta come over and you gotta take the iBoot CD out and put your oh, didn't have that. Your retail Snow Leopard DVD in. Okay. And let it uh, go ahead and let it read. Once it gets to the point, you're going to go ahead and just hit F5 on your keyboard. F5 will just reload the bootloader. See? Oh, there we go. There's the OS X install DVD. There's my previous install of Snow Leopard. I'm just going to delete that and put it right over the top for this tutorial basis. So hit enter. And basically, it'll go right into the standard loading of, uh, of Apple's Snow Leopard. And just like any other installation, it's going to take a little bit just to get the, the loader up and running. Okay, so now we're at the installation menu. All I'm going to do is select the ling language of your choice, I'd obviously being US English. Right away I'm going to go, ahead, go up to the utilities and go to the disk utility menu. I want to make sure that I erase anything that's already existing on there and create a nice fresh new single partition on my 200 gig hard drive that I'm using. Okay, so here's the base hard drive right here. I'm going to hit partition, single partition, options, I want the GUID partition table. Snow Leopard, that's what I'm going to call it. I'll hit apply, partition. It will go ahead and go through its unmounting and partitioning of the disk. Okay, now that we have the partition complete, we can go ahead and close out of the disk utility. Continue here. Agree to the terms of conditions, of course. Select the location. I like to customize, and I just like to have everything installed as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and install both QuickTime and Rosetta. And hit install. From there, it will do everything it does as normally installing Silverbird, which will take a half hour possibly, and uh, boom, boom, and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, this time uh, I just uh, re installation is, is done, and it went to restart. And basically, I had to obviously when it restarted, I had to take the Mac uh, CD out and put the iBoot CD back in. And if you actually go over here, you can see there's the iBoot CD. Usually, it's all the way on the left, uh, but I had F5 actually, but. Uh, Snow Leopard, the, rather than go, put the anything back in and go from the CD, now you want to go from your actual Snow Leopard, Snow, Snow Leopard partition. 
hit enter and everything should boot up just like it normally would. So here we go, I just went through the whole Snow Leopard it's, or, uh, you know, OS X welcome screen and now I'm at the, I guess, the official welcome screen to actually go ahead and set up. Uh, just like anything else, you choose the information that's relevant to you and uh, I'm not going to transfer anything for information and you go over here and you register your computer. So I'm going to do that we'll go back to the desktop. Okay, so here we are at the desktop. Obviously the hard drives go crazy, but uh, I have my key here with uh, my several Hackintosh tools that I actually won't need um, per se, I don't believe, but uh, we're going to just go the uh, multi-beast way from the iBoot. So if you go, just go to your uh, Safari, just type in iBoot in for uh, a Google search. Top one's going to be a Tony Mac 86 blog for iBoot multi-beast. This is where I got my iBoot uh, CD stuff as well as where I'm going to get uh, multi beast. So if I go down here first I'm going to actually start downloading because in order to do the multi beast you have to have the Mac OS 6 X 10.6.6 combo update which you'll get from the actual uh, Apple site. So we'll let that start downloading while I go ahead and get ready to get multi beast from here. So I scroll back down down the blog page here to multi beast. Um, and uh, down here there should be what I need here. Let's see. Maybe I went too far. There we go. Download Multi Beast. So I need to download that. You'll have to register and log in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm logged in now. I'm back at the, the standard page here. I'm going to go ahead and click Multi Beast again. Since I'm logged in, I get to the actual download page. And I'm actually going to need Multi Beast, is the one I need. And now uh, it's downloading too. And uh, that's all I should need for now, at least. So I'll let those download and then we'll go from there. So everything's downloaded. One of the pre prerequisites to using MultiBeast is to install that update combo that we installed. It's, a not, it's almost a gigabyte in size, but uh, we just uh, have to install that first. So go ahead and go through the whole steps of performing the install of that. Continue installation. And there she goes, and then once she's done here, then we'll go into the multi-beast. Okay, so the installation was successful, uh, but you do not want to hit the restart button just yet. So just uh, hold that off to the side there. Um, I can actually yeah, go ahead and close this window and this window. And what you're going to want to do is open up the multi-beast, uh, which I actually put up here as well. And go ahead and open up multi-beast up now. Uh, Continue, continue, yay, agree. Uh, and then here's where you're going to want to make sure you put in the right stuff. Uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to use Easy Beast rather than using a user DSDT. If you have one already made up, you could go ahead and use that here rather than Easy Beast. I think it's one or the other. Uh, system utilities, you're going to want to put all of those. Drivers, do not use all the drivers unless you know exactly which drivers you're going to use. So, with that said, I am going to um, use a bootloader with uh, hopefully some uh, some audio drivers that I know fit mine, or at least I, I hope fit mine. Uh, you can uh, basically just kind of go through here, make sure that anything and everything that you could use is put in um, network drivers real tech that should be mine right there so with that said there we go we got that to that point um, you could also put in some extra software if you want they have some ktex utilities and some kx utilities um, and uh, yeah so that's that hit continue when you're ready to go install and it will actually install everything in there automatically for you. So along with that, when I selected the Realtek driver, here's the stuff to tell me to continue and actually install that separately. And uh, I'm going to use the release version rather than the debug version. Go ahead and continue install. And she goes in from there and she'll install that. So there we go. Uh, if we actually go back here, MultiBeast was installed. Close that. Uh, I'll check those when I get back. I actually installed iLife while I was waiting for it downloading. Um, I'm just going to close everything out to make sure I don't, I'm not missing anything. 
both these guys are telling to re restart, so it's not going to matter which one I hit. I'll just hit the big guy there. Show restart. I do not currently have a disc in the machine at all. Actually, I might have the iLife disc in there, but that is what it is. And I ain't going to start anything anyway. So basically, it's going to shut down and we'll uh, start back up without a disc. As long as it worked correctly. So this is my bootloader that I actually installed from Windows. And uh, it's uh, I'll post a link in the notes where you can do this. But it's just a program, I think it's called Easy BCD, And you can download it for free on the internet. And you just add uh, a record for Mac and automatically puts it there. So it should automatically find my machine. The bootloader should automatically go. I'll just hit the button to skip that through that. And I should be able to go into the OS without using a disk and just using the stuff. So everything should be on the fly and ready to go. So I'm actually just starting to come into the operating system right now. Everything seems to be as it was. Um, and uh, yeah, here we are. We're actually back in the operating system. And that's it. We actually went from needing a pre-boot CD to no longer needing a boot CD whatsoever. I actually did a similar thing to this. I couldn't use iBoot on my laptop because it's a Dell. A Dell doesn't like iBoot, I guess. But I used uh, the Dell CD and that, or the Dell Snow CD, and it worked just fine actually. Uh, let's see if I actually have internet connection, and I do. Excellent. So that means that the drivers are working there as well. So um, the only thing I was wondering if the audio drivers have never worked on this machine yet, and I actually haven't tried those new audio drivers that came with it. Doesn't sound like there's any audio. So I'll have to find a, a KEXT file that works for my audio, but uh, as we sit currently, I have internet, and that's the most important thing. And uh, obviously there's probably a few other things that I'll have to eventually work into play, but there we go. That's a, a pretty rough system of, on how to get your own Hackintosh computer up and running. So there you have it. That's my little uh, tutorial, I guess, video tutorial over how I installed Snow Leopard on my Hackintosh computer. Now, uh, I don't have audio working yet. Um, I actually do have audio working through a USB set, but not from the onboard audio drivers that are on my motherboard. But not the biggest deal in the world, um, but it is something that I'll work on, and I'll eventually find the KEXT file that works. And that's kind of how it goes. Uh, over the course of this actual video tutorial, I actually had to install it twice um, because the first time I did it, I put in a, a KEXT file that screwed the boot loading up and it wouldn't boot anymore so I had to of course re redo it again which that's the way you, you, um, you're you charting in very uncharted waters it's not like a whole bunch of people have done it on your exact setup before because everybody has different everything on their motherboard so uh, you know you may not have this you may have the same motherboard but maybe different memory or whatever so everything's a little different and same you know graphics cards everything so if you like what you saw, please, I appreciate comments, questions. If you need help with your setup, I'd be more than happy to give you what I've learned over my little rampage through the setups. Uh, of course, I've done it on two rigs, no, three rigs now. So uh, I'm getting used to it, I guess. But uh, still a Windows guy, but <clears throat> it's, uh, I like having the difference, seeing the differences between the operating systems. But uh, also have the bar up top. Please, please subscribe. I appreciate it. And uh, again, comment. Please, I, I, I recommend all comments. So uh, if you like what you saw, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you next time. This has been the Tech Rooch with another video review slash tutorial. So take it easy.